Let's divide the two types of amplification that we're talking about into, uh, well, there's three he asked about, but we'll divide it into two categories, if you will. So class A and class AB, which is strictly analog speaking, if you will, and then class D, which is somewhat of a hybrid between analog and digital. So let's start with Class A and Class AB amplifiers. Essentially, Class A and Class AB refers to a biasing scheme. And that refers to how much, well, bias is a, is a technical term. How much is the amplifier on when there's no signal being played, okay? Let's start with Class A. If I have a 100-watt Class A amplifier, it means that when I plug that amplifier in and if I have no signal going to the amplifier, no musical signal at all, it is consuming 100 watts and that consumption is being converted to heat. And of course, most amplifiers are not 100% efficient, so we're probably drawing 150 watts per channel in order to do that. Now that is a constant bias. That means that the amplifier is on and drawing current, producing heat with no signal. When I put a signal into the amplifier, I will still have only 100 watts going through the amplifier, but instead of that wattage being converted to heat, it now travels to the speaker and is converted to sound. So at its highest level, all of that energy is going to the speaker. At its lowest level, the, the signal I'm referring to, then the amplifier is turning all that energy into heat, but it's always going to consume that amount of wattage. And the reason we want to do that is to keep the transistors or whatever we're using as an output device on all the time so they don't go through this on-off phase that a number of devices and amplifiers do. So now let's move on to class AB. Class AB is the same thing I just described, except instead of always drawing, let's say, 100 watts and converting that to heat, now we're going to draw fewer watts always. So imagine that there is a bias in on current for a Class AB amplifier of, say, 20 watts. Okay. Now, when I plug this amplifier in, connect it to my speakers, and then I don't put any kind of signal into it, it's going to draw a constant 20 watts, and that 20 watts will go into heat, keeping all the devices that create the output signal on for that amount, 20 watts. As the signal starts increasing, I'm going to be putting out more watts. If it's a 100 watt amplifier, I can put out even more. I can, I can take it up to 100 watts. And that energy is all going into the loudspeaker. And when that energy stops going into the loudspeaker and there's no signal, now I'm back to our 20 watts. So class A or class AB is the degree or the amount of which this bias, this constant on current is going through the amplifier and being converted to heat when it, the transistors or the output stage is always on. What are the advantages of it? Well, lower distortion on a Class A amplifier, typically you have to do less in terms of feedback and other stuff to get distortion lower. Um, there's, a, there's any number of advantages that are too numerous to go through in this short little video. But most people generally find Class A amplifiers to have a sweetness and a musicality that you don't quite find as much in a Class AB amplifier. But those are too sweeping of, of definitions because we make a Class AB amplifier that is as sweet and musical even more so than many Class A amplifiers. And I'm sure the opposite is true. So you, making a sweeping generalization like that can be dangerous, but that in general is the difference.
Now let's go on to class D. Class D is a whole different way of generating musical energy and powering loudspeakers. It uses something called pulse width modulation. And that's where we have a stream of pulses that are coming out at a regular frequency. And let's call it 100,000 hertz. That means once every 100 thousandths of a second, there's going to be a pulse. And depending on how loud the signal is, that pulse will either get wider. If, as, as the signal gets louder, the pulse gets wider. As the signal gets quieter, that pulse gets lower, uh, less wide, which is why we call it pulse width modulation. In fact, let's see if I can do this. Here's a picture of a pulse width modulated signal. And you can see that there are pulses and as it traces the sine wave and the sine wave gets higher, then the pulses get wider, producing more energy. The transistors are on longer. And if we want a quieter sound, then those pulses get shorter. So let's take it back. So what are the advantages of that? Well, because the transistors that make the class D output stage are either on or off, they are running at their maximum efficiency. So very little heat is generated. Now the problem with class D is that those pulses, which happen, let's again, at, let's say 100,000, 200,000 times a second, have to be eliminated. The quick transitions from zero to on, off to on, uh, those transitions need to, to they're, they're noise, they're, they're energy that we don't want to have into our speakers. And so we have to eliminate it. To do that, we have to build a filter, which is called a low pass filter, which is a, usually a series of inductors and capacitors that go on the output of our class D amplifier thus raising the output impedance and requiring designers to come up with some pretty fancy feedback techniques to lower that down. It's a very complicated process to build a great class D amplifier. So that in a nutshell are the major differences between class A, class AB, and class D. Mm -hmm.